Welcome to Bear Archery's Hunting 101 podcast, where hunters new and old come to learn and find inspiration from stories of hunts gone by. Everyone is welcome to enjoy the outdoor way of life, and there is no better time to start than right now. So let's head into the great outdoors with your host, Dylan Ray. All right, guys, thank you for joining us today on Bear Archery's Hunting 101. We have with us on the phone Mr. Shane Mowry, the bone maniac himself. Shane, how are you, man? Man, I'm doing great, Dylan. It's great to be on. Absolutely. Always a pleasure talking with you. Always a pleasure to hear from you. And, uh, man, I'm just excited to talk. Um, I'm just excited to talk coming to Bear and uh, and what it means for you to come to Bear and, and what that what that partnership really means to you. Um so before we dive in, uh, I do want to give a quick thank you to our friends over at Garmin. Um, I've used Garmin products now for, oh, the better part of probably six years and uh, just fallen in love with their wearables, their watches, and uh, and their in-reaches. And, you know, there's nothing better, Shane, I don't know about you, but there's nothing better than being in the backcountry and, uh, you know, being able to just check in with your family, being able to check in and say, hey, I'm safe, love you guys, um, or you know, once you harvest an animal, being able to text back home and say, "Hey, uh, just put a put a bear down or put a bull down," or or finally got the white tail I've been chasing, and uh, you know I'll be home soon. It's just it means so much to be able to reach out to your family, but also the safety features that an inReach offers, and being able to to reach out for help if anything happens like that. Uh, the Garmin products are absolutely incredible. I know you use a, a, a few Garmin products. What all do you use? I do. Uh, the inReach, uh, it doesn't leave my side. Uh, that's a necessity living where I live and hunting in the places I live. So um, just, uh, well, <laughs> the the inReach has uh, saved the wife from having uh, numerous heart attacks. So um, <laughs> it's uh, it's definitely a, a prerequisite for me to, to have by my side at all times. And not only that, but uh, as as a houndsman, I run uh, the Alpha Series a great deal for my hounds as well. So those two products, um, they're always in the truck or on my side. So it's, a, it's definitely a great product. They have a great technology, and I tell you, it's, a, it's helped uh, outdoorsmen come a long ways. Yes, it has, man. I remember my first backcountry-style hunt. You know, not being able to talk back home um, can, can really wear on a guy. Um, not being able to reach out to his family and, and, and you know, hear that his wife and kids are okay. Uh, it can grow mentally taxing, and uh, we were out in Idaho, and I had no cell phone service since, like, day seven. Um, I was finally like, hey, man, you've got an inReach. Would you mind if I texted back to my family? And just being able to text back and say, hey, I'm all good, love you guys, uh, can't wait to be back home with you and hear back from them uh, was just, you know, it almost gives you that breath of, of fresh air and, okay, let's hit the ground running again. Um, <laughs> and so at that point, the inReach became necessary. Uh, so – Check out all of Garmin's products because they are absolutely phenomenal from the watches that I wear every day to the inReach that I use in the mountains. Just absolutely fantastic products. Uh, before we dive in, Shane, give us a quick introduction to yourself. Uh, I know you've been on the show before, but give us an introduction to yourself, man. What is Bone Maniacs? How did it come about? Uh, what what all do you do? Um, how'd you get how'd you get to where Bone Maniacs was a reality and you you realized this is something I need to do? Um, you know, just, just tell us about how you got to where you're at. Oh man, <clears throat> if anybody knows me, I'm a man of few words, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it all started for me, uh, in the log home industry. I've always, uh, been traveling throughout going to various places, hunting. Um, and, uh, you know, I, we did some things, um, for a gentleman and, uh, He's like, hey man, why don't, why don't you film your film your hunts? And I'm like, <laughs> because I have no desire to even dip into the uh, the technology that it takes uh, to do this. And uh, throughout the project, he kept wearing on me and wearing on me. And and uh, I said, you know, I can I can give this a go. Um, joined up with some with some local guys, you know, 15 years ago, and did some things, and um, just didn't like my aspect and my views on um being a steward of the of the woods or steward of the forest whatever you want to say is a lot different than theirs and um and you know i'm i'm kind of a loner when it when it's all said and done and um i, I just took it on myself to to see where i could take it and uh, i don't i don't take uh 
failure lightly in life. And, and 10 years later, here I am, um, you know, still flooding the storm. And uh, anybody that knows me knows that, you know, it's, it's not the face of TV or anything like that. It's, it's me being out there, being able to, to share my experiences more so with my family and friends than anyone else. Um, but, uh, a lot of people, I, I guess have seemed to like, like my approach and lo and behold, here we are, um, just, uh, just plugging along in the industry and, and, uh, keep, keep doing the mentorship, uh, that I'm doing, teaching the hunter's ed and, and helping outfitters, uh, you know, make a lot of their dreams happen as well too. So, um, that's that's where i'm doing that's what i keep doing and uh hopefully hopefully i'll keep uh keep putting smiles on people's faces yeah absolutely man that's what it's all about is just bringing the outdoors to people who who you know a might not ever get exposed to it but b live and breathe it on a daily basis and they want to be able to watch it they want to be able to to scratch that itch they want to be able to you know as they're sitting at their desk or as they're you know, laying in bed at night, whatever. Um, that's what it's all about is just being able to let people enjoy the outdoors through what you do. It is. And, uh, <clears throat> the, the way, the way, uh, life and society and social, whatever you want to call it has become, um, I've, I've decided to take a different approach and, um, put down the family business of three generations and call it quits. And I, I took on just doing this full time and, uh, the pay is not the greatest, but it's not always about the pay. I, I prefer a simple life, and I think anybody that that lives in Idaho or the PNW will agree with that. They just um, they enjoy, uh, I guess, uh, seclusion and being able to um, you know grasp that with your family and your kids and and, and just enjoy it. And uh, that's what uh, right now, and uh, we're living it up every day. That's awesome, man. So tell me, tell me about the switch to bear archery um what what was the driving force behind you making the jump to bear archery <laughs> you know what's the truth <laughs> <laughs> absolutely uh, i only know how to be transparent man i tell you well you know i actually it's kind of funny because i, I was um it all all this is is just manifesting right now with with bear archery and you know uh, you know i'm still considered a nobody and don't really care i prefer that um but it's it's one of those things where i grew up shooting bear archery and you know and you know when you know my dad and my dad used to shoot for tom jennings and ibo and you know and my whole family has always been around archery and um and my 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 granddad and I just made a huge post about that this morning, um, about the buck that he, he had taken with, um, with his bear recurve back in 1947. And, um, it's always been there with me, uh, as, as, you know, bear archery has always been the founding father under umbrella under everyone. I think everybody, no matter what you shoot today, um, uh, bear archery, has been around um, somewhere in your mind. There's there's been a time that bear archery has been present, and that was the case for me growing up, learning learning to shoot traditional and and um, uh, it, you know it it just came about um, where you know I mean uh, I consider John a, a great friend, and uh, when he came on board, he and I talked, and I was like, wow what a wonderful opportunity um this would be and uh for for how i value um you know uh being an outdoorsman uh family values teachings um the way fred bear taught the way he influenced uh kids and adults alike and, you know it's just uh, uh being able to be a part of that um I didn't care. I didn't care if somebody offered me $10 million. I, I wouldn't have took it from another uh, uh, archery company. Um, that means that, I mean that. <laughs> I mean that with all my heart because it's uh, it's a foundation of where it it, uh, it happened with me, with my granddad, and, and being down. To, I still have a 1956 bear cub that was passed down to me, um, and I'm still using it today. Um, so that just 
tells you like how important uh, this opportunity of being with Bear Archery is to me, um, of having having those type of products back in the day when Fred was still alive and and being influenced as a kid and uh, my parents. Um, it, that's where that's where it came to be a reality for me when uh when i was when i was offered to come on board and um i talked it over with my wife and she's like this is this is really meaningful for you and you know i had a couple of other opportunities and it didn't matter it didn't matter um this is this is where home is this is where i uh plan on you know my whole tenure of whatever I'm doing in the, uh, in the, uh, hunting industry, this is, this is where I would call home. And I think anybody that's, uh, got a good foundation with bear and has that opportunity, um, would, would think the same way. I think they'd be crazy if they didn't. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's, that's the testimony you hear from most, which is such a beautiful thing and speaks volumes of bear archery. You know, if you jump back, uh, two episodes ago and listen to Fred Eichler uh, on the show and, and him talking about coming to Bear Archery, it's the same testimony of, <laughs> of it's a bow company that I shot when I was a child. It's a bow company that I fell in love with at a young age because that, that was my first introduction to archery, and now it almost feels as though I'm coming home. And that's my testimony. Uh, that That's my um, experience with Bear. You know, Bear was my first bow that I really purchased myself and and put time and love into, and so uh, to, to 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 have that coming home feeling is just fantastic, and, and it just speaks volumes to not only the products that have stood the test of time, but to a company that stood the test of time, and to a company that that still that still speaks speaks to that that family value, and that I mean, it's just a testament to Bear Archery, not only their products but their company, and it just. Uh, Again, I'm like you. I don't know how you can't get giddy. I don't know how your how your heartstrings can't be tugged on when you think back to that first bow of yours, and when you think back to what made you fall in love with archery and what made you, you know, that first bow in your hand and 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 experiencing the first shot of a bow and and that being with a bare bow. And you know, I'm just like you. I don't know how you can how you can have that that coming home experience with anybody else. You know. Oh, 100%. I mean, <clears throat> I took my first whitetail with the bear cub. Um, and it's, in, it's in my hands again. And, and it's, and it's the quality, it's the, uh, the mentorship throughout the whole process. And it's, I feel like the life cycle of that bow <clears throat> is back. Uh, I get to share that with my oldest son. Um, this year I was able to take his very first whitetail with the bear archery products, um, this year. So, it, you know, and being able to, uh, you know, keep the family tradition, if you will, um, within those, um, uh, parameters, I think is, is just, uh, it's, it's really heartwarming for me, you know, and I get, I get a little sentimental on it because, um, you know, my granddad meant uh, so much to me as growing up and the stories. And, you know, if my dad wasn't able to take me hunting, we were always fishing or hunting or, or, <laughs> or outside doing something, you know, uh, in the woods, ma mainly cutting wood. But, um, it's one of those things where uh, it's uh, it's just a beautiful relationship, and I think uh, you know anyone that uh, has an opportunity to to shoot um, bear archery products, they have something for everyone: kids, women, you know, traditional crossbows, you know, vertical bows. It, it doesn't matter; they have it all for for everyone, and that that to me. Um, speaks volumes. Um, yeah, they, they've they've just been around. They there's uh, there's no reinventing the wheel. It's here, um, and and you're like you just said. They've stood the test of time, and um, I, I'm just I'm just uh, stoked to be a part of it. And now that you know my kids are of well, my oldest is of age. <laughs> I still have I still have three under the age of five, so uh, I got a little ways to go. But um you know, having my wife, uh, being back involved because, you know, now she's able to get back out and, uh, she's just as much as a killer as I am. Um, when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, hunting and things, but it's just, uh, it's just great, man. I, I mean, and words can't really describe, um, you know, how, how stoked I am for the season. And we, we were down in Kentucky, you know, and she was able to, you know, take her very first whitetail buck, um, you know, with, 
with the uh, bear constrictor with the crossbow. So I mean, it's like just being able to not only because it's my wife, but I, I would do that for anyone that wanted mentorship or, or uh, I see that all the time at, you know, teaching the hunter's ed or whatever is you see the gratification, you see the, um, and not just taking animals. You don't have to just, you know, a lot of people think archery is just for that, but it's very therapeutic as well. But the point I'm making is being able to see <clears throat> someone use, um, that product and like just the, uh, the joy that it brings, um, in, in hunting, you know, because there's a lot of emotions. You, know, you just provide it for your family, you're hunting. I know that people think, ah, oh, it's, yeah, you can go to the grocery store. Not for us. It's not, it's yeah. not about going to the grocery store for us. Um, everything that I take uh, that God put on the earth here, that's what's in my freezer. <clears throat> I don't go to the market and then buy meat. And I refuse to. But um, it's, uh, it's just great, man. It's just, uh, just a wonderful thing to to just have in your back pocket all the time now you mentioned liking to take people hunting and liking to pour into people and liking to see them harvest that first animal and man i think it's time that we make our big announcement because (laughs) one of you guys one of you listeners is going to have the chance at a completely free bear hunt in idaho with shane himself but better than that, we're going to give you a brand new 2021 redemption, fully set up with all of your Trophy Ridge accessories to take with you on the hunt. Pope and Young, our friends over at Pope and Young, are going to cover your tags. And our friends over at American Hunt are going to cover an additional $250 worth of your expenses. So Shane is going to get to take somebody on maybe a very first bear hunt, maybe a very first archery bear hunt, maybe... Uh, it, it'll be your first opportunity to shoot a bear bow. Maybe maybe you've hunted bears all your life, and uh, this is just a chance to go hunting with Shane himself. So, uh, man, are you excited to be able to take somebody hunting? Man, I'm super stoked. That's a silly question. You know, whoever this lucky winner is going to be, <laughs> um, man, uh, they're going to have the experience to see some great PNW uh, wilderness. You're going to get to see, like, just what it is to be – out um in the back country this is this is where i hunt this is this is my home and we're, we're going to be able to experience that firsthand on on just how i do things um and i think it's it's really not any different than anyone else i'm not trying to make myself special here but it's i'm just super ecstatic because i love sharing the events that go on that i do every day like sometimes I'll take my kids out and they're like, they're not stoked. I'm like, I'm like the big kid. I'm like, I get to take you to do this, you know? And they're like, oh. so dad, I just want that one to be just as excited as I am for them. Because I tell you, they're going to have a wonderful time. They're going to get to experience some super beautiful back country. And most of all, we're going to tag out. That's what I'm talking <laughs> That's about. Happen, man. Man. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And even, I don't care who you are. If you don't get excited about a completely free hunt, you're absolutely crazy. But beyond that, a brand new 2021 Redemption, that's the flagship bow for Bear Archery this year. They're going to give it to you completely free, set up ready for you to hunt. And you think to yourself, what if I'm not a bow hunter? Uh, Well, this is a good chance. This gives you two really good opportunities to either have a foot in the door with archery. You've got a brand new bow set up. You've got a guy ready here to teach you. Uh, to teach you, the, to show you the ropes and, and get you um, on a bear in bow range. So if you're not a bow hunter, then this is absolutely a beautiful chance for you to become a bow hunter. Or I'm sure Shane don't mind if, if you have limitations on not being able to shoot a bow, bring a rifle. That's okay. You still got a free hunt. You still got a free bow. And uh, and, and I, I just, I'm excited for whoever wins this to to have this opportunity and to be able to get out there with you and and harvest a gorgeous idaho bear and if you don't know about idaho idaho is a phenomenal place to bear hunt one of the few states that offers spring bear hunts so in those down times of not being able to hunt big game it's an opportunity for you to get out and hunt big game but also i think i saw the i saw the percentage and i don't remember exactly what it was but i think it's like 80 percent of bears in idaho are color phase so it gives you a really good opportunity to kill a beautiful brown colored, cinnamon colored black bear, and you I can just tell you you're going to have an absolute blast. We have the highest color phase percentage out of anywhere in the world. 
and that is no joke. It is it is phenomenal with with uh, with what you'll see. I mean, really, it's going to be like uh, you know dipping into the Skittles bag because <laughs> there's going to be tons of uh, different <laughs> uh, different colors of uh, a bear, and it's just phenomenal. And that's one of bear hunting is is uh, is something really something I really enjoy. I've always enjoyed it. Um, not only with running hounds, um, but just the spot and stock, just, just however you want to hunt them, hunting over bait, which is legal, uh, in Idaho as well. But, uh, it's, it's just, uh, beautiful to be able to watch those animals. It, they're a lot different. The one thing that, that, uh, I always tell folks, um, when, when you're hunting bear and, you know, and guys that are listening, it's like, it doesn't matter if that bear because 99 percent of the time he knows you're there if you're hunting over bait what's more important me getting shot or me eating 99 percent of the time <laughs> food wins okay and you win because so it's it's really comical to be able to watch these creatures uh in the wild and um and all honestly sometimes i I, I'll come home and, you know, after one night, I'm like, I just, I just couldn't even shoot it. I couldn't, I, I had such a comic relief that, um, I just wasn't comfortable. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's yeah. almost like I just couldn't do it. Um, on that particular bear. <laughs> now the yeah. next day it's game on. <laughs> yeah. But it's, uh, um, it, it's, it's just a phenomenal hunt. Uh, it's a phenomenal experience, not only, um, to hunt the bear, but just to be able to experience the back country and, um, and see, you know, uh, some real, um, some just real phenomenal times, man. It's just, uh, it's what it's all about. And we'll definitely make some memories. Yeah. And man, bear, bear have be quickly become one of my favorite games to chase. Uh, mm -hmm. it's such a versatile hunt, you know, I mean, uh, you can hunt over bait, you can spot and stalk, you can hunt them with hounds, you can hunt them with bows, rifles. I mean, it's just a phenomenal animal to chase but they're also like you you've mentioned they're just so fun to watch they act different they i mean to see a bear stand up and scratch its back on a tree and, and, and to see this monstrosity of an animal uh you know pick blueberries off of a bush that's so delicate and he eats them it's just like man they're fun to watch in nature and they're just they're it's an incredible hunt so um man one winner is going to be incredibly lucky so check out the link in the description to this podcast, in this episode, head over to Bear Archery's social media where they've posted the giveaway. Click on that link. Get entered to win. Make sure and subscribe to this podcast because, A, it's a great podcast, and, B, that's going to get you one entry to win. So you're already a step up if you just click the subscribe button on the podcast, and you'll be able to stay tuned for the next giveaways in the future. So make sure and subscribe to the podcast. Now, Shane, you have mentioned – now both your kids and your wife did the all inclusiveness of bear archery and and trying to get your wife and your kids involved in outdoors play a huge role in coming to bear uh 100 uh 100 as far as that because bear caters to everyone you know uh there's something for everyone at bear archery you know from the beginner just starting out um all the way up to the most experienced professional hunter out there. There's something for bear archery. And that's a good determining factor um, for everyone to consider because uh, everyone at bear archery is, is, is phenomenal to work with. Uh, they're very versatile in, in all the, of the products and very well worse in, uh, you know, um, in the teachings, you know, it's, it's just, that's what it's all about. It's just, great mentorship um and you'll find that with everyone is alike there's nobody better than you there's nobody nobody cares what your status is or anything like that and i want to make that very point because you know i find with with other things like it, it, it in life is like some people at the bow range could be <clears throat> very staunch uh, i experience that a lot um you know if i'm in in different states i, I make it to my make it a point of mine to just drop into to local pro shops and just chew the fat with people just to, just to see, you know, especially guys that aren't shooting bear, bear products. Um, and there's nothing worse than, you know, going out to the range and, you know, feeling really uncomfortable. Um, and that's, 
that you don't find that. I don't find that at like the people that uh, that I see that the shooting bear. Um, I find them very, very warm and very eager to help. And that's something that I think is uh, that needs to be practiced more often um, in the whole archery thing because you know it's it's one of those things that I think if everyone tries archery, they'll love it. You know, um, it's just uh, it's just a good therapeutic. Um, way of just uh relieving stress for me you know my mind just wanders and i'm just like okay it's a uh, it's time to just pick up the bow the crossbow the trad whatever it is and just you know whether it's with my with my kids or my wife or by myself it's just a uh, it's just a good uh, good way to have good peace of mind and and uh, i i i really appreciate everyone um that puts the time in to uh to teach others you know about archery and and it's just, you know, not enough good things to say with uh, with the atmosphere that you get at Bear. Now, not only do they make bows for everybody, but they make bows that flat out perform for everybody. I had, mm-hmm. the, I had the ability this last week, I was down in South Texas, and I had the av- ability to shoot the legit, uh, which if I was going to buy a bow for my for my kids, my, my eight-year-old, I would buy her a legit. Also, it's what I'm going to be getting my my wife is a legit, and uh, but I picked that bow up and we we quickly in a matter of seconds put it in my draw length, and uh, it shot phenomenally. I'm like, man, this is a three hundred dollar bow, uh, <laughs> three ninety nine, whatever it is for the package. I'm like, this is a ready to hunt package, and this bow performs fantastic. I'm like, so for my kids, listen, this is exactly what I'm going to do, Shane. I'm going to get my kids and my wife a legit. And then that's what I'm going to carry as my backup bow when I go on hunts because it is a phenomenal shooting bow. Man, we have a guy on our team uh, who is a 30-inch draw, just a monstrosity of a man. And uh, and he set that legit up, and it looks like a little toy in his hands, but he was driving tacks with that bow. And he was like, dude, it, it took him five minutes to set up, five minutes to side, and he's like, dude, I could shoot a deer with this tonight right now. And uh, I was just blown away by the performance of that legit. So not only do they have bows for everybody, but they got bows that perform well for everybody. And uh, man, I'm just I'm 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 blown away by that little bow, a phenomenal shooting bow. Um, they are. Before, they are. Before we move on, I do want to give a quick thank you to our friends. Talking about the backcountry has got me inspired about my optics, and I absolutely am a huge fan of Koa Optics. If you've never checked out Koa Optics. They make some of the finest spotting scopes and binoculars on planet Earth. So when you're out in the backcountry, it makes a backcountry that much more enjoyable uh, to have a good set of optics to where you can to where you can glass those those hills and glass those those canyons. So go check out Koa Optics. They're a Japanese made brand and they flat out perform. My favorite optics I've ever had. That's all I use. It's all I ever will use. And they are absolutely fantastic. Uh, now Shane. We've started something new, and this is going to be kind of a regular because I am passionate about eating wild game. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I love eating wild game. I love preparing it on an open fire in the mountains. I love preparing it on a camp chef at back at base camp. I love preparing it at my house for my kids. I'm just a huge proponent of eating wild game. And based off of our conversation and up to this point, I already know your passion about eating wild game. <laughs> so I'm starting a new kind of a new segment, a new question that I want to ask my guests called Cooking 101. And uh, and it is pre- it's presented by our friends over at Rebel Six Rubs, and, and what Rebel Six has done is they have created a line of rubs for every animal that we harvest. So you can buy, uh, you know, like the sweet bear, and it is made to complement the taste of bear. And uh, and you can get you know you can get Midwestern fish rub for all your fish that you would catch here in the Midwest. You can get uh, venison rub, which is they're all made to complement the taste of wild game. So being a wild game connoisseur, uh, that seasoning just speaks to me. So, Shane, what's one way um, maybe you like to prepare wild game? What's your favorite wild game? Uh, what's one recipe you got for us? What's one tip to cook wild game you got for us? Uh, but but what's something uh, wild game that you can teach me? Uh, well, man, as we spoke earlier, it's like, you know, here's a simple way. Uh, it's just a way for me. Um, is as soon as as soon as I'm uh, approaching the the animal I just took, uh, the first thing that uh, that I take out is 
is the tenderloin and i'm i'm at it on my jet boil and i always carry some seasoning you know it's normally just salt and pepper because i'm pretty simple um and i just use a little bit of a little bit of water and boy it's uh it's pretty tender in that jet boil and, and uh it's it's just something that I like to do. Um, and usually whoever's with me is, is enjoying it as well. And that's probably just because they're hungry, <laughs> but, um, but you know, it's, it's one of the things that, uh, that we like to take, uh, is the back straps and we stuff them. Uh, the, I should say the wife, I help her. She's, she's the cooking guru. That's always, always coming up with these uh, fantastic, uh, wildlife preparations, but, she stuffs the back straps uh, with jalapeno and uh, cream cheese, and that's and uh, she does a uh, marinates it in soy, and uh, that's what we put on the open flame. Um, that's typically how we have all of our back straps. Um, she does do a uh, a uh, a little secretive thing, and I'll be honest with you, I don't even know how she does it with the bare back straps. But um, you know, one thing that people you know, we was just talking about bear and giving away with the bear hunt. One thing that we will do once, uh, once we do take that bear out there for the winter is I will have her teach these guys, uh, about, um, you know, preparing the backstrap of a bear because it is so marbly. The flavor on it is phenomenal. And, um, it's, uh, it's something that you'll never experience. I don't think, uh, if you've never, if you've never really been open to bear, which, a lot of folks are not open to bear eating bear. Um, a lot of folks aren't open to eating mountain lion, but I tell you, it's one of the one of the flamingons of of meat as far as uh, being a meat kind of source. So um, it's it's one of those things that man, we could just talk about food forever because I love to eat. <laughs> um, but um, I don't know that I have a favorite to be honest with you. Um, like I mentioned before, pretty simple. Um, and, uh, as far as, uh, being extravagant and things like that, as far as what we cook, um, I, I just enjoy, um, maybe it's just the wildness of the game, but uh, I look at it as being fresh. And I think anything that's, that was taken that's fresh and organic, uh, out in the wild, um, has a unique taste as, as its own. And, and I embrace that. So I don't like to, I don't like to dirty up the meat, so to speak with, with a lot of fancy sauces and, and stuff like that. We kind of keep it to one or two different, um, seasonings. And usually the, the wife has got some fresh garden seasons that, uh, that she throws on. So. Yeah. And man, I'm a huge proponent. I'm a huge proponent of just salt, pepper and throw it on the grill. Uh, because, I don't want to cover up the taste of wild game, uh, sure. which is which is what I really love about Rebel Six. You know, I've used it on several different um, several different species, several different uh, kinds of wild game, and again, it's made to complement each taste differently. Uh, but that is the base ingredient: is salt and pepper, and, and, and then they throw in some other things again to complement the taste of that. And so, I'm a huge proponent of being able to taste the wild in your in your wild game. Um, now, I don't like when people say it tastes gamey. No, it doesn't taste <laughs> gamey. It just tastes yeah. like venison. Uh, <laughs> right, right. I mean, right. I can't go to the store, buy a steak, come home and eat it and say, uh, just case tastes kind of store bought, you know? Um, <laughs> it just tastes kind of kind of grocery store ish. No, it tastes like beef. Um, so if you don't like venison, don't oh. write off wild game completely. Uh, because I mean, if I don't like chicken, it doesn't mean I don't like steak just because it's bought from the same store. Um, so, right. <laughs> so I would encourage you try different things. If you don't like venison, try bear. If you don't like bear, try elk. If you don't like elk, try antelope. Try these different wild games and find out what you do like. Um, it's okay to not like one of them. It's a, it's a, it's all right. I mean, to not like the taste of a certain meat. Um, but don't just write off wild game and say it's all gamey. No, they just taste differently than what you buy because of a different meat. Um, so that, but I'm also man. I I can tell you this. In the back country, you, you're sitting over a dead animal, throwing it on an open fire, throwing it on a jet boil, throwing it on whatever you have to cook. That right there is when that meat is going to taste the best. It just is. 100%. Man. 100%. That's when it's always going to taste the best. So I like that, and I'm probably going to have to steal your your uh, your um, ritual there and start doing that. <laughs> 100%. I mean, if if you if you uh, experienced in the back country and you and you slip out the the tenderloin without field dressing the animal 
Well, that's the key there because it's just untarnished to, to any of the, the intestines or anything like that or being exposed. It's just that meat is phenomenal. Um, yeah. and, I, and, and usually that's what I do is uh, I slip those out real quick and um, before we even get them home, you know, because it's just I feel like that's the best time to do it. Uh, well, it's the freshest and the, the tastiest. Um, but uh, I, I agree 100% is, is uh, open flame, um, salt and pepper. I mean, you just can't beat it. I, I mean, that's just, that's just, uh, that's just how, how it's meant to be, I think. But there are some pretty nice, pretty nice seasonings out there. I have to admit, I'm, I'm guilty of, of eating, uh, you know, just, just various kinds all the time, sometimes putting, putting too much. Uh, our household is, is, is ranch. Everyone loves just ranch on everything. Kids, the wife's got the kids spoiled on. Now we can't eat this without ranch. I'm like, well, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> That's just the way it is. <laughs> Man, I was a little hungry before we started recording. Now I'm starving. <laughs> 100%, man. Now it's like, I'm starving. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's nice, you know, going to the freezers, <laughs> I should say freezers and, and, you know, picking out, well, what are we having, you know, and one little short story is like you said, it's like, it's okay not to like it, but you know, I think it's just one of those things in your head that, that they don't like it. They don't like that. Oh, it came, it came from the wild. It, it was eating this, it was eating, you know, um, you know, pine, pine needles or whatever, you know, and 99% of the time, if you were to take venison or, or uh, antelope or, or cougar or, or bear and you were to put it in chili or you were to put it in some type of a, a fajita or something like that, um, we've made mountain lion fajitas. And I tell you, no one will know the wiser. <laughs> if anything, I've gotten compliments of saying, this is phenomenal. What is it? Well, it's mountain lion. And you would see the face if you could only see it. And I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 just hold up. Just <laughs> let's, let's explain it. You know, and I've, I've done those little tricky things. And I think ever, we're all guilty of it. But if they don't realize that, um, that uh, you know, it's just the animal is there. I mean, you, you utilize it. It's, it's fresh. It's tasty. And if you, don't, if you don't get people out of that mindset of, like, it's, it's wild, 99% of the time they don't even know what they're eating. You know, I mean, really, they don't. Absolutely, man. And, uh, you know, enough about food because I'm absolutely starving. Um, but man, you know, I had one guy tell me, uh, and I didn't like, just like you just said, I didn't tell him what I was cooking. I just made a mistake. And, uh, and, and he said, man, that thing's so good that if I put it on top of my head, my tongue will beat my brains out trying to get to it. And, uh, <laughs> and I was like, well, you're eating venison. And he was just blown away. And, uh, but, uh, now what are you shooting this year from bear? What are you shooting compound wise? Uh, traditional wise, crossbow wise, uh, what all, what are you shooting? So, so on the, um, on the, uh, vertical bow compound side, uh, I'm shooting the, the redemption and, um, and I'm shooting the status as well, both phenomenal shooting bows. Um, but it's, um, it, it's just depending on the hunt, uh, that I'll use whichever one of those. I, I love the EQO cam system on there. They're, they're just, it's just a wonderful cam system. It's just, it's just perfect. Um, the draw cycle, everything, the back wall, everything about the, the compound. Um, I, I love on both those bows. Um, I, I, I've never been one for a shorter bow uh, on the uh, axle to axle. Uh, my sweet spot's always been around 33. Uh, I love that. Uh, however, that new redemption <clears throat> is spot on. It's, it's just phenomenal the way it shoots. The performance of it, um, you know, it's just everything together. The brace height, the cam system, the tunability, uh, the, it's just everything about it um, uh, is is phenomenal. Um, the same way with with the status, I just like, I know you're going to think this is crazy and a lot of people do, but I like that little bit extra weight. Um, I've always... I've always grown up, you know, with, with those heavier bows. And I think it was maybe just growing up shooting those big old tanks, um, you know, in, in the early nineties. I don't think it's crazy <laughs> at all. People, people are on the rave about light bows. Yeah. But listen, light bows, 
holding them out at full draw, they're less stable, in my opinion. They're less stable. Uh, they're they're blown more around by wind. Dude, I hunt in Kansas. Uh, it gets windy, man, and and a heavier yeah. bow just sits at full draw. It it just sits heavier for me. I mean, it it doesn't move around as much. It holds on target better. Uh, less vibration, less hand shock. I mean, um, people are all about light bows, and I'm like, uh, okay, you know. I understand maybe finding a sweet spot between uh, heavy and light if you're packing it around the mountain for 10 days. But for a Midwest whitetail guy, why the crud do you care so much about weight? Um, mm-hmm. When you miss a lot of advantages in having a heavier bow because you're trying to get as light as you possibly can. So uh, yeah. I don't think you're crazy at all, man. I like a heavier bow as well. Um, and and don't, don't tell me. Don't say I, I like a light bow. And if I look at your bow and you shoot with a quiver on and you shoot with a front bar stabilizer and a side bar stabilizer, and uh, I'm like, well, if you like a light bow so much, why'd you add two stabilizers? Why do you shoot with your quiver on? Why do you, you made this bow a heavy bow? Um, yeah. So, so I don't think you're crazy at all, man. No, it's uh, and I shoot with all that on. I mean, everything. I don't ever take my quiver off uh, either in a tree stand or packing, and you know, and and most guys, oh, I need I need all this like for lightness for backpacking i'm like dude you got 40 pounds on what's 41.4 pounds okay so i i don't i don't i don't fall into that nonsense um you know so after years of packing out two and three hundred pounds of meat you know uh 40 pounds is nothing as far as i'm concerned i'm not i don't cry over ounces um you know so it's i like that um it's not for everyone you know but it's 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 for me um, but both of those bows, the status and the redemption, I love all the features on both of them, uh, 33 and the, and the 31. So, I mean, I, they shoot and the performance of them are, are fantastic. Um, and I tell you, I'll, I'll put that redemption up of, up against any, any flagship bows that's out there. That's, that's how confident I am of, of how people will love it, uh, and the shootability of it. Um, for the, uh, for the crossbow, um, I've never shot a crossbow until, uh, signing with bear and that constrictor is like, I'm like, wow, this is, this is kind of like, this is new. This is something new for me. This is exciting. I'm like, oh, well, yeah. I, I mean, I'm teaching my boy, um, to shoot recurve and vertical, you know, and, um, it's, it's great, but, um, being well versed, I think, is important for me, and I think it's important for any hunter. I mean, it's like it's one more tool, weapon, or one more tool that I get to use in a season. So um, I'm like, why not? So uh, shooting that thing is is just unbelievable. Um, and the wife, the wife shooting the constrictor as well. And I, I hate to admit it, but man, she's she's pretty uh, she's pretty nasty with that thing. <laughs> um, I think. Uh, it was uh, 52 yards, I believe it was. She shot her buck in uh, Kentucky uh, last week offhanded. So it was, uh, it, it's impressive. The bow's impressive. It's quick. I mean, and the deer don't even know it. Animal, really, doesn't even know it, what was hit. Um, so uh, on those lines, and then uh, for the trad bow, which I will probably be predominantly using this year, um, just because I wanted, you know, I just felt like, back to my roots of, of, of having a bear and, and coming in is like, uh, the super Kodiak, um, they had built for me. And, and that's, that's when I'm at, at, uh, 29 inch draw on that. Uh, I believe it was right at 69 pounds. So it's, a it's a, it's a beast. There's no doubt about it, but that thing's whipping out an air at like 218 feet a second. And I'm shooting 512 grains off of that. Wow. And, um, that thing is, uh, it's a beast. It's no doubt about it. Uh, the, the white tail that I shot in Kentucky with it, uh, it just blew right through it and I shot it at 24 yards. Um, I, I was impressed. Um, of course I, I killed an elk with it this year and I killed, uh, the Sika with it as well. Um, but this, this buck, wanted to be famous <laughs> he he gave me the perfect shot <laughs> you know so um yeah. so it was it was one of those you know paired up with uh with that f4 um it, it's just you know uh it's a great shooting bow um it's uh you know i i'm i'm looking to pass this down to to one of my boys 
Um, cause I don't think my girls, I don't know. I hope my girls can't pull it. If it's, if that's the case, <laughs> then, uh, I pity their, pity their husbands later in life. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But, uh, but that's, uh, that's what I'm, uh, what I'm shooting this year. Um, that's awesome, from Bear. so now, you know, Fred Bear was big on field notes and, and I've become, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't keep a journal, um, and actually write down the field notes, but I'm big on mental notes and, and what happened and how I could have done it better. And, and, uh, you know, tips along the way and tricks along the way and, and things that make the hunt easier. So share with us one field note you've learned over the years. Study the animal. That is something I'm really big on. And I teach that to my, my wife when she's hunting with me, I teach it to my kids. And, um, during the scouting season, it's always scouting for us. I mean, I'm always hunting. I'm on at least two hunts a month, you know, across the country. So no matter what species that I'm on, whether it's squirrels, I mean, I was teaching my boy, it was like years ago. It was like, okay, so I want to know that animal inside and out. <clears throat> I want to know its characteristics. I want to know the um, characteristics of of, uh, of of the whitetail, so to speak. Whitetail has always been what I feel is – one of the uh, most challenging animals uh, in North America to hunt. Um, they're very tough to beat. Um, so one thing I will we'll just point out there is like with my wife, she had sent me this text because we, we doubled up in Kentucky. We killed 15 minutes apart. Uh, she was about 400 yards from me in a tree stand and um she had t sent me a, a text message and she said, I just shot one. And the first thing that I said to her, I said, did you remember what I taught you? And she said, yes. And the first thing that I taught her, I said, before you shoot that animal, remember what he's doing. How's he acting? What's his position? Um, because that can determine a lot of things, you know, what's his adrenaline like, or, you know, if he's fully re relaxed. Uh, so I, I really like to look at those type of things, um, you know, before and after it, it's, it's key for me to understand, uh, the personality, you know, if his adrenaline's up is how far is this thing going to run? If it's a great shot or, or, um, or just in general, um, you know, if he, if he knows you're there, but he's not going to present you with a shot is like, what do you need to do? Um, you know, with, within your arson to, to be able to, you know, beat that animal. So that's what I'm really big on. Um, and I do, I do write notes, uh, not only mentally as well, uh, but I, I'll do jot, jot a few things down, especially if I'm, if I'm on an animal that I feel that, um, that could be a little challenging because uh, each one of them has their own personality. Like I was on a whitetail in Kansas uh, for three years and I couldn't kill it. And I'm still pissed off to this day about it, <laughs> you know, because uh, <clears throat> oh, we don't know where he is. The deer died of old age. I was on that buck for, I uh, had history with him for four years. Um, and uh, at the time we knew he was a four and a half year old when I started with him, but on the property that I was hunting is, he never would engage with, he was a loner. Uh, he would never would engage with, with, uh, with other bucks. Uh, even when, when it was time for the boys club, you know, it was, it was, he was always by himself and he was very hard to, to pinpoint. Yeah, man. I think that's absolutely vital for people to understand. And, and like you said, study the animal, become a student of the animal that you're pursuing and uh, I think we would all become better hunters if, and, and even if you say, well, I would do a pretty good job of it, I think we can always do better at it. And I think we can always learn more about the deer we hunt, learn more about the elk we hunt, learn more about the bear we hunt, learn more about, I mean, you can never know everything. So, so I think it's a great tip, man. I think it's a great field note. And I think if we would take that and really uh, apply it, then we would all become uh, better sportsmen in the end. So uh, Shane, man, thank you so much for coming on, man. I am so incredibly excited, uh, to have you a part of team bear archery and, uh, and to hear you talk so passionately about how you feel and, uh, and, and having that coming home experience. I'm, I'm pumped for you, uh, to have that experience. So 
before we go, man, I do want to give a quick thank you to our friends over at Minus 33 Merino Wool. Uh, they make some of the finest Merino on planet Earth. I am a huge advocate of Merino Wool, and uh, I'm a huge advocate of the way they do it. So uh, most of what I wear, even on an everyday basis, is now Minus 33 Merino Wool because I've fallen in love with their underwear, their socks, um, their shirts. I, I basically wear it all the time every day and uh and uh, i'm just a huge fan of merino so go check out minus 33 uh shane man again thank you so much for coming on and thank you for being a part of team bear i appreciate it and i'm uh, i'm happy to be home dylan now do not forget to go get entered to win that giveaway because i promise you you're going to want to go on a hunt with shane in idaho and it's going to be a blast and you're going to kill a bear you're going to get a free bow you're extensively paid for so go get in the giveaway, subscribe to the podcast, and you're already one step ahead in the giveaway. Guys, thanks for listening. You guys have a great week.